It's time to talk about the truth about the tight end position. I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler. A lot of them stink, but some of them are really great. Let's find out who's actually good and really helped your fantasy team in 2019. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in! The season is over! Are we celebrating that? A champion has been crowned. I think it means the season has started. Yeah, 2020. I should have started with, oh yeah. (laughs) Tuesday, February 4th. Wow, what a Super Bowl that was. What a game, man. It, It was absolutely sensational. It had... It had really everything that you could possibly want from a Super Bowl. Some back and forth. Back and forth. The drama. Lots could, of drama. Could have been a last second victory. 49ers losing. There was almost the, the best what Super Bowl. What else could make it better? Oh, what could have made it better? If the Super Bowl MVP was rightly given. Oh, it was. To it the de- player who should have gotten it. No way. That was Pat Mahomes. Super Bowl Look, MVP. It's fine. I, I'm not actually here to really argue that Damian Williams should have been the MVP. But if he had, because we talked about it. you would have enjoyed it very as, much. As soon as, as soon as the game was done, I turned around to the guys and I said, who's the MVP? And no one could just immediately, oh, well, it was it was obviously Mahomes. It's, oh, it was, oh, crap. Uh-oh. And then Jason, <laughs> it was, it was Jason's like, face, when, when I asked him the question, just lost all color. I wouldn't be here today. He dropped from a euphoric celebration that Kansas City beat our the, the hated 49ers, but hated by us because division. And then he just he realized Damian Williams is actually legit in the running to be the Super Bowl MVP. There was a good 12 or 13 minutes where I was shook. <laughs> I was waiting on pins and needles like, oh, no. This can't happen. Please, no. It was a special game. I My eight-year-old, who won his first fantasy league this year, whose favorite player is Patrick Mahomes, who's worn a Patrick Mahomes jersey or shirt for weeks on end, just saw his favorite player win the Super Bowl, and I realized it's it only goes down from here, son. I mean, why peak? At eight years old is what I'm asking him. Why, Pete, well, your life is as good as it gets right now. Honestly, though, I've still never seen my favorite player win a Super Bowl. So if I could see them win one, even if I was eight years old. you yeah. take it. I think I would take it. Well, he's probably got some more in him, don't you think? You would think you know, so. That, that was the funny thing is when it was 20 to 10, and I, I think we all agree the game was almost made by the – Third and 15, nine-yard backstepping. Yes. Wrong foot Patrick Mahomes to Tyreek Hill play. But there was a part of this game when it was 20 to 10 when I thought this thing was probably going the 49ers way. When you kind of, you know, I looked to someone that we were watching the game with, I'm like, you just imagine a guy like Patrick Mahomes will have another chance, but you'd never know. Someone like Dan uh, Marino. Say the same thing happened to Marino. Ah, he'll be back. What was it, second year in the league? Second or third year in the league, he goes to the Super Bowl, never has another shot. Yep. One of the best quarterbacks ever. So you have to take your, your opportunity when it's there in front of you. What a game. Yes. Really exciting, really fun. Had a good time. And a nice capstone to the uh, 2019 season. And like you said, 2020 just began. Whew. It's going to be a great year. The draft class is great. The free agent class is great. There weren't as many coaching changes as in recent years. Still some big ones. You know, Ja Rule getting a head coaching job for the Murder. first time. But uh, that, yeah. well, you know what? That was, besides Damian Williams' MVP, the one thing that I was missing was I had a prop bet for – Shakira d- can't win MVP, Mike. No, I understand that. But oh, okay. Jennifer Lopez could come out – with 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 Ja Rule, she had a smash single back in the day. And it didn't happen. And it didn't happen. Fair fair point. And the truth is, the way that the NFL PA and the NFL are negotiating, we might have enough games to where the season will begin next week. Guys, I have a I have a really quick question though, but as as I kind of put a, a, a bow on this discussion. 
if there was a wide receiver who in three games uh, during the playoffs had 76 yards, 114 yards with a touchdown, and 98 yards, oh! where, where would you draft him in fantasy? Well, does he have any draft capital? Like, where was he drafted in he, the Previously, he you mean when he like, came into the league? When he came oh, into he league. was a first-round pick. I want oh. you to understand, I know this show is successful, but I will burn it to the ground right now. <laughs> If this off season is you making people draft Sammy Watkins, I can. I will burn it to the ground. I can promise you <laughs> that will not be happening. Oh, I, I, it's amazing. He, he knows how to take advantage of games in which his fantasy owners will not benefit. Well, like, just, that is they what he showed knows up how to do. and they said, "Sammy, it's two straight playoffs for Sammy. You're either taking a pay cut, or we're gonna we're gonna have to cut you off the team unless you start." putting up some numbers you're like oh okay oh, I'll, I'll play now <sighs> ridiculous playoff yeah. run yeah all right uh we had the ultimate draft kit is now available for pre-order happened on super bowl sunday that's ultimate draft if you pre-order before march 1st you get five dollars towards shopballers.com 10 bucks towards fantasychamps.com you get the early access to dynasty and rookie rankings and of course the lowest possible price and a chance to win a listener league spot. So check that out at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can check out the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We're on Instagram as well. And the website's the fantasyfootballers.com. So we're done with the Super Bowl talk because we've got tight, tight end truth to talk about on the show today as well. That's fair. So nothing else you want to throw in there? Uh, No, I think I'm Damian I'm Williams, only, 17 for 104 and a touchdown. In, the only other thing that I would say... a receiving touchdown. He was awesome. Yes. The only other thing that I would say is that there is no justifiable way to not call a timeout before the oh, half should we, for uh, Kyle Shanahan. And, and you waste an entire possession. Oh, I don't want to give it back to Pat Mahomes. We get the ball coming out in the second half. You had the ball. Well, they had two minutes and plenty of They had three time. timeouts, though. Kansas City had three. It was it was the argument, right? Like Kansas City, if you if you get a stop on first down, Kansas City get uses them up. But you're two minutes to Patrick Mahomes. You have been you have been dominating Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City. You have been dominating them, and you have a chance to at minimum get three points. You have not been dominating them. The score is ten to ten, Mike. You that's but as far as defensively, the that's game. dominating. Oh, you're saying on defense, your yes. defense has been dominating. Yes, I see. That, that's like, yeah, I didn't mean as a whole. Just like you, you have basically shot him down. If Mahomes has put up ten points and a half, I just it was when you lose was, everything you did was wrong. It was no, that's but, one of, but that's this one was of the wrong things that in happened. The in moment. the moment, we hated it. In the moment, it was like, what are you doing? The whole entire so did rest the of general the game manager for the team that was in the booth calling timeout. <laughs> so 49er fans, as Arizona Cardinals fans, sorry, not sorry. To the Chiefs fans, congratulations. Yes. First time in 50 years. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, this is an interesting one because, well, we'll, we'll just talk about it. All right. This one seems How are you doing, Brooks? Doing great. You ready for 2020? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. Cowboys? I will see about that. All right. <laughs> Less enthusiasm. If AJ Green leaves, here's the buy sell. Tyler Boyd, buy or sell a top 20 wide receiver in 2020. So just for context, he was the wide receiver 17 in 2018. He was the wide receiver 23 last year. And that was last year with some very poor play. You had uh, a period without Andy Dalton. All of that said, and I, I, I think that they are obviously going to draft Joe Burrow. Uh, you can say maybe that is an improvement at quarterback, certainly over the backups that took over last year, over Ryan Finley it is. But this is an easy sell to me. Um, the reason why it's an easy sell is because I don't like wide receivers for rookie quarterbacks, even great ones. I mean, this was why coming into this season, I was not very high on Christian Kirk. I know that was uh, one of the – we had debates on that. It wasn't because Christian Kirk wasn't great, and he showed out. Like He had a couple games where it was like, oh, this is going to be something special here. But rookie quarterbacks, even great ones, they are throwing for low 20s in the touchdowns, and they're throwing for uh, in the 3,000 yards. And so if, if your volume is just not there in your rookie year, I have a hard time 
saying that's going to be enough to support you know a top twenty wide receiver. Uh, so I would I would sell personally. It's a sell for me. I mean, there were five five weeks out of seventeen that you were happy in, uh, or out of sixteen that you were happy with Tyler Boyd, and there was no AJ Green this year. So if AJ Green but, leaves I mean, or not, he he wasn't out there this year. But he was still the wide receiver twenty three on the year, and that includes his his goose egg because Ryan Finley was his quarterback. I mean, if he had done any anything of note, you know, just forty yards or so, he could have ended up as a top. Well, let me. Guy. I mean, do you think? Uh, when he finished, okay, so he's ninety for just over a thousand and five this year. You just wonder, I, I you know you liked what you saw passing volume wise from Zach Taylor last year. Ninety for a thousand forty six. Right, isn't that not just over a thousand? Oh, I thought I heard you say a thousand and five. Oh, five touchdowns. I'm sorry. You're I'm good. Sorry. You're good. So Tyler Boyd, third most routes run this past year, seventh most targets. Mike, are you buying or selling? I'm buying him as a top twenty guy. I'm I'm with you, Jay. I don't I don't want my wide receivers to be uh, driven or uh, sustained by a rookie quarterback. But I believe he'll be far away the number one option on the team, and he's I think he's a really good wide receiver. He's this is back-to-back -back years of 1,000 yards for Tyler Boyd. I don't think top <clears throat> top 20 is like this huge It's the right benchmark. number. But I mean, if he ends up as the wide receiver 19, the wide receiver 20, that it's just it's not shocking. I guess if I'm playing the odds and I think he'll end there, then I sh should sell because you're taking the field. But I'll buy it. I think Boyd can be a top 20 guy next year. All I, right. I, I like the talent. I do think Tyler Boyd is a talented Wide receiver. I, I just don't want to pair it with rookie production. He was the 34th most consistent wideout this past year. Even if you buy top 20, sliding into it just barely, consistency, I can't imagine it being much different than this past year in terms of outside that top 30 with a rookie quarterback, myself. All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Make sure you go to pristineauction.com. Use our code BALLERS. You get $10 towards a sports memorabilia purchase. I recommend you go right now because they're right in the middle of a 10-year anniversary celebration this auction. This week. This week. There are over 1,200 lots right now with no reserves on any of it. And so you can check, out, uh, you can check them out on social media. They've got a pretty special announcement coming up on Thursday. But if you go over there right now, pristineauction.com, use the code BALLERS, you can take part in that 10th anniversary celebration. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. All right, I, I joked about it briefly, but Adam Schefter is reporting that the NFLPA will conditionally vote for or against a 17-game regular season schedule. This is one of the league's sticking points on a new labor agreement with the Players Association. The Players Association wants a higher percentage of revenue, and every fantasy football or NFL fan in the world wants them to want the same things or at least get what they want so we can have uh, a regularly scheduled 2021 season. This will not affect 2020. So if Correct. anybody out there is thinking they're hearing about labor disputes and all of this, Football is already on schedule. Uh, this coming year will be excellent, and hopefully, uh, they sign this deal before the end of this. You know, uh, they're right now voting on it, so hopefully, they can get things passed before next year. But football is going on schedule this coming year, and it's wild because one of the things that could happen with these with a seventeen game season, there could be two bye weeks. I mean, now we're talking about. A 19-week season, there's going to be pretty large changes just to how just fantasy football is structured in, in playoffs and championships. Hopefully they put the bye weeks in a place where it's friendly for fantasy playoffs and you don't all of a sudden have a second bye in like the, the, in the actual fantasy playoffs. So wow, I mean, that, could, that could happen. There's yeah. a lot to watch out for. That, that's, it's a complete unknown at this point. As far as I'm concerned, Mike, that just means that our listeners will do even better. That's, That's right. Yes. It's, uh, it's true. And all the Week 17 championship people are there. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we pulled it off. Yeah, we're we're important in Week 17, yeah. and we'll be saying no championships in Week 19. That's right. That's right. 
So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. If if they vote for it, it would go into effect 2021. Ryan Fitzpatrick, he says he is playing. He says the Dolphins are very open about wanting him to play for them. He expects it to happen. I would imagine Excellent. the slight, you know, the best strategy to me seems like barring, you know, if the team wanted to sign Phillip Rivers, for example, if Tom Brady wanted to play in Miami, that type of situation could change things for the Dolphins. But outside of, you know, one of those big name guys coming to Miami, it makes Why? the most yeah. sense for them to bring in a rookie, put Ryan Fitzpatrick behind center, uh, get that second year with Ryan Fitzpatrick. He wants to be there, but I imagine the murkiness right now is just related to other free agent options. Yeah, and, and you know, look, they brought in uh, as as offensive coordinator Chan Gailey, a guy who's been the head, co you know, uh, the offensive coordinator of Fitzpatrick on two different teams. Well, Ryan Fitzpatrick has had about 35 offensive coordinators. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it should be fun, and I'm excited because – the Dolphins were unexpected fantasy points this last season. Once Fitzpatrick got in, and the Devontae Parker, Devontae Parker, very yeah, Devontae Parker has to be very happy. Dak Prescott, Adam Schefter reporting that the Cowboys wow, are expected. They're, they're expected to use the franchise tag on Dak Prescott. Do you have that tweet in front of you, Brooks? Do you want to read it to us? Oh, I do not have it in front of me. Why don't you pull I, it up while last, we talk about it? Yeah, the last thing I read is, of course, Dak doesn't want to be franchise tag because the franchise tag frankly that sucks for nfl players but he uh, he's already perturbed maybe it's po just posturing but he's upset that the deal isn't already done he's come out and he said i'm not training in dallas this year please report on that like i mean he's he's already positioning himself a deal will get done we've seen this before last year with ezekiel elliott the posturing from two sides. But the, you can't. The discontent, et cetera. I just Your think, quarterback has to be there for training camp, though. I'm just saying that I yeah. think you're right. I think oh, a, a oh, deal okay. will get done. I think yeah. you'll have the stuff come out in the press on both sides of it. Uh, this was the tweet, uh, league sources telling ESPN, with no long-term contract in sight, Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott are heading straight towards a situation where they, where they will have to use the franchise tag. Brooks, were you going to add something? Uh, yeah, it's just from an uh, ESPN article. That, that could end up going, you know, a Kirk Cousins situation where they franchised him a couple times and then led to complete free agency. I, I don't, I don't think, think that, so. I don't think this will happen. I think Jerry signs his guys and he'll he'll sign them to a long term deal. All right. Uh, also being reported, the Raiders would pursue Tom Brady if he doesn't resign with the Patriots. Some news about the Patriots willing to pay Tom Brady in excess of thirty million dollars. I still believe that it's 98% that Brady's back in New England. I agree. For however much money. Which team do you have Tom Brady going to this week, Jason? The Indianapolis Colts are a great destination. Are we going to rotate this until he signs? That is right. Uh, I Brooks, can you log when I say <laughs> you've already got the You've already got the Titans, right? I can't the, keep up, man. Well, but I just want to be able to come back and be like, I see I called it. And you would. You would say that. No, he's definitely going to re-sign with the Patriots. I think that's all we got by way of news. We got some uh, truth we need to get into here. Before we do that, we want to thank today's sponsor, Sonos. We've been talking about Sonos for months. It's the best speaker solution out there. All three of us, we have our, our houses decked out with Sonos gear it's the best sounding speakers you can find because they are designed from the inside out for incredibly detailed sound and deep bass. 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 They are, <laughs> <bass. They're> fine. <laughs> they are fine tuned by Oscar and Grammy winning producers, mixers, artists. They, they have this true play technology that puts speaker tuning capability of the recording pros in the palm of your hands. You just pull out the app. Part of the fun with the Sonos is the unboxing presentation is is absolutely top notch. Then you get to use the app. You feel like an absolute wizard setting this thing up, even though you're really not having to do anything. And before you know it, you have the best sound coming out of these speakers. You can connect speakers all throughout your house over Wi-Fi. You got to go to Sonos.com to learn more. That's S-O-N-O-S.com. And we want to thank Simply Safe not only for being a long time sponsor of the show but a long time uh you know protector of our studio we've been with simply safe for years and years and the reason is because 
They are one of the best ways to protect yourself without a long-term contract. And police, they get they get these false alarm calls all the time. But with Simply Safe, they they have monitoring services that can see that look, someone is inside. There is an issue here. Police will dispatch up to three hundred and fifty percent faster than with a normal burglar alarm. That's a lot faster. That's a lot faster. They have outdoor cameras, doorbells alerts, entry, motion, glass break sensors. They can even uh, protect your home from fires, water damage, carbon monoxide poisoning. It's all monitored 24-7 by live security professionals. You can set it up yourself. It's really, it, it's simply safe. Look, yeah. visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get a free shipping and a 60-day Risk-free trial. Go now and be sure you go to simplysafe.com slash footballers so they know our show sent you. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. I got a little confession to make in case you want to know the ins and outs of Simply Safe. Mm -hmm. we, we did have an incident mm -hmm. the other day, and uh, I got a little alarm. I said It said you know the alarm's going off at the studio. Getting burgled. I was at home, and uh, <laughs> I log in to the camera because i'm like it's like eight in the morning i hadn't left yet i figured it was brooks you know messing something up sorry brooks classic brooks. uh mm -hmm. and all i do is i turn the camera on and i see jason sitting there eating a burrito it's true i'm at the and table. the whole alarm's just going off around him you're just eating I'm he's just, just eating chilling. well i had a burrito and i had salsa <laughs> so i had okay. to eat the burrito right, with salsa you. while the alarm is blaring <laughs> yeah. everywhere so I'm like, what is he doing? Why not? Why didn't he put the code in? I get the call from Simply Safe. They're like, "What's your passcode?" And I'm gonna be honest, I didn't remember it right away. <laughs> so I go Who through. Does? I try to go through my like my three go to passwords, and I'm thinking she's gonna be very forgiving on the other end. You oh, know? Oh no, it's, it's serious. She business. hung up on me. Yes, but, as and she, she should called have. Jason as he's eating his burrito, and he nailed it on the first yeah, try. I got it. I I had things on lockdown, but. The reason I was sitting there eating my burrito while the <laughs> alarm's going off is simply because Brooks was replacing the uh, the the batteries and he was in the other room taking care of it. Yeah, uh, so I'm like, all right. I'll but just it was a, quite it. the picture of Mr. Breakfast over here. I'm not going to be interrupted <laughs> by any alarms. I'm willing to break in and eat. But let's. There might be a burglar in the back. This burrito is sure delicious. <laughs> all right, let's get into the truth. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! If you're just arriving at the truth episodes, where you been? That's message number one. Oh, I thought message number one was, hello, welcome. That's what I meant. Now, message, where, message number two is, where have you been? We've been doing this for a while. This is the last one, right? Yeah, this is it. We have covered all of the truth other... Truth About Kickers, Jason. Oh, gosh. That's I a will... solo pod, our first ever. <laughs> Jason's doing the Truth About Kickers. It's a two-hour extravaganza. We actually won't have a producer here either. It's just you It will take me in a 20 microphone. seconds to record that episode. It's all in rhyme, the though. The Truth About Kickers is this shouldn't be in fantasy football. Click. Clickers. You were supposed right. to rhyme it. Oh, uh, missed that part. We're going to talk about... The truth of the tight end position. We'll start with this statistic. Eight NFL teams targeted the tight end position 25% or more of the time in 2019. Ravens, 42%. Makes sense. Eagles, 39%. Both those teams, multiple tight end options. I can't believe it's only 42. For the Ravens? Yeah. It feels like it should be like 75. 80. They only run tight yeah. ends out there. And sometimes Hollywood Brown. <laughs> that's right and Willie Sneed's basically a tight end and they don't pass their running back that much it's uh, this does seem surprising they should have a, like a, a mighty ducks flying v formation where they just take all, all their tight, tight ends, ends but they all like surround Hollywood Brown so you don't even know he's in there well you can get Ebron over there too he's gonna be free oh yeah There's, oh, so the Ravens at 42 percent the Eagles at 39 percent by the way the eight NFL teams that's the most since 2016 the Raiders at 33%, the way... Uh, yeah, the Walrus. <laughs> Colts makes sense, right? Yeah, makes Ebron sense. Doy. That's 29%. The 49ers at 28%. Makes sense. Chiefs at 28%. Also makes sense. The Rams. Does not make sense. Went from Everett to Higby. 
Yeah, Higby. Went from nothing to Higby all the time. Higby was a revelation the last five weeks of the season. Once he became the starter, we'll talk about the truth about Tyler Higby in a little bit. And then the Titans at 25%, which sometimes you think, okay, it's just you know one or two players, but what do they use? They used Anthony Ferkser all the time. Ferkser and Joe New. Yeah. Did we, a little have, bit more than you'd expect, low, lower passing volume. Have we talked about the news? I mean, it's not like huge hard-hitting news, but – Delaney? The fact Greg no, Olson. that Greg Olson and the Panthers have talked to each other and they've decided to mutually split ways. So Ian Thomas and his dynasty arrow is pointing up. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're uh, making some changes yes. in Carolina. Yeah, they are. Yeah, but I thought you were going to bring up Delaney because I think Delaney is going to – he's a cut candidate. Yes. And he's getting up there, long in the tooth. So let's look at the tight end position. Great games at the tight end position. We're calling any game over 15 fantasy points. Good games between 9 and 15. And bus games fewer than 6 fantasy points. Travis Kelsey's number one. He was also the most consistent tight end in fantasy. Not a surprise. 97 for 12, 29, and 5. What are, were your takeaways from this Travis Kelsey season? So Travis Kelsey has been the number one tight end several years running. Uh, I don't see any reason to doubt that he will be the number one tight end. Even with Kittle coming up, the truth is he's very consistent. He's very good. He had a monstrous season, and yet the touchdowns weren't there. So you were a little bit disappointed, but given his yardage, his targets, all of that, I would fully expect the touchdowns to go up. The big thing I was going to get to was that his red zone targets dropped dramatically from 16 two years ago when he was an absolute touchdown monster, and it dropped to seven, which turned into a massive drop in red zone touchdowns from nine down to two, which is why you only had the five total touchdowns on the year. So it was, it was disappointing. I think if you, if you paid up the draft capital to get Travis Kelsey, you had a difference maker at the position, but he wasn't the same dominant force that he has been in the past. Which it certainly could it, – that could bounce back immediately. Just a weird thing of the red zone targets went down. So, But there's not really a whole lot to focus on with Kelsey. Yeah, he's, he's the good. number one guy. If you want safety at the position, draft him. Yep. Uh, George Kittle, <laughs> number two, second most consistent tight end. My favorite tight end to watch is George Kittle. He's absolutely – a dominating four, 71% good games, 43% great games, always a threat for a monster play. He can do what Gronk used to be able to do, just take a ball in the middle of the field and turn up field and get loose. I mean, he is a an athletic marvel, and he just recently said he's been playing with a torn labrum in the right shoulder since 2018. To make things fair. Why? Why? Yeah, that's an, yeah. when it's back in 2018 – and you chose to just ignore it for a couple of years, that's just to even the even the playing field. I don't think you get to make that excuse anymore because that's just called playing. Like, this is who I am. I just – I like, I've got a slightly bad shoulder, and I'm playing. I mean, for, if it's been multiple years, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like George Kittle could stitch his own labor back together. Oh, for sure. He is the type where he would – Pull the bullet out of the wound and yeah, set himself would, up and put the gunpowder in and bite light your it on belt? fire. Yeah, oh yeah. You bite the belt? Yeah, he doesn't even need to do that. No. Shot of whiskey? He just pops a piece of bubble gum in. Yeah. And he's good to go. Yeah, he look, these two guys are beasts. The the question really between those two guys, they're both consistent, both have big blow up games. It's just Travis Kelsey's on the offense that's gonna score more, so projecting forward you expect more uh, big games and is that worth the higher draft capital or would you rather gonna save, be real close save a round do you think they're a round apart probably not i think there may be a half a round apart if that's the case i would go kelsey kelsey more targets more receptions more yards same touchdowns but like mike well, said positive regression on his way and well and george kittle played 14 games so if you look at his per true. per game basis he's literally tied in basically in fantasy points and receptions per game with Kelsey. So. so if they were a round apart, you're still going Kelsey, Jason? Is that what you said? I am because I think that the touchdowns don't make sense for Kelsey, and I would rather have the higher power offense. But I agree. To each their own. Kittle led tight ends and yards route per run for the second year in a row. He's a valuable weapon, whether they bring back an Emmanuel Sanders, whether they find another weapon. You know, Debo will be there, but Kittle's a beast. We're moving on. Yep. Oh! 
Darren Waller actually finished the year as the number three overall tight end. He was number eight by consistency rank. How do you how do you look at Darren Waller after this season? What's the truth about Darren Waller? I eighth don't most even consistent. Know, man. So here let me talk about Darren Waller for a little bit because this is the most confusing tight end. I had to talk to Brooks about him while we were uh, putting this docs together and going through all of our scoring for consistency metrics. Darren Waller was either the most consistent tight end you could be, depending on your frame of reference or your, your uh, you know, put it this way. I made it to where a bust game is fewer than six points. And with that, he busted four times. If I made the bust metric fewer than seven points, he's never busted. Four times he scored between six and seven points. And so we had to ask ourselves, how does, and this is in half point scoring. And I think if you're in half point scoring, you felt like those games really let you down. You weren't happy with 6.4 points from, uh, you know, from Darren Waller. And so therefore we included those as busts this year, six or fewer points. That's what dropped him down to number eight, because in the middle of the season, he had a stretch where he just was super disappointing and you thought uh, after the first three games you got a superstar and then at the end of the year uh you know again when when um Hunter Renfro went down and right. they needed him more I think that the truth is Darren Waller if you're in a full PPR league consistent enough very good in a half point or a standard league he let you down several times so uh, you know that's the truth about Darren Waller is he is a PPR volume dependent guy who surprisingly didn't score a lot of touchdowns and I would be really surprised if his volume stays at the level that it did this year because I don't think they had many other options and I expect them to have more weapons next season well we heard they were the number two overall team in terms of target percentage or number three overall in target percentage to the tight end position like you said, he was more of the kind of consistency trap that you could be in, in the sense that he started so strong. But when you talk about hurt you at the tight end position, it's not the same to me as the other positions are. Because pivoting at tight end, streaming the tight end can be more difficult. <laughs> yeah. And what it's more like, what would you have gotten elsewhere? When Darren Waller finished at you know the 17 overall, the 17th overall tight end in week five, well, okay, you didn't get a Darren Waller week, came back with number one the next week. What are you going to do? Because you essentially are stuck in that situation where uh, what other tight end are you going to put in there? You need to bet on the fact that you have a guy that can give you a top-end performance. What's crazy for Darren Waller is he only had the three touchdowns, and I looked it up, so you have 28 times a, a tight end has had 1,100 or, or more yards. Waller was tied for the lowest touchdowns of anyone in that list. So it just it, like having only three touchdowns, eleven hundred yards, simply doesn't make sense. Seventy five percent of those of the times that a tight end is at eleven hundred or more yards, they've had at least seven touchdowns. So if Darren Waller continues to see the usage that he is, if that he got, then Darren Waller could be even better. But I'm just not sure that the targets are going to keep up. Yeah, you have more question marks with Darren Waller than you do a lot of other tight ends, right? Mark Andrews going into next year. You know who his quarterback is going to be and what the offense is going to be like. Kelsey, Ertz, those have stability. Waller not only broke out as a fantasy option for the first time in his career this year, but you saw fluctuation based on Hunter Renfro. Now you have a Derek Carr that who knows if, the, if he's the quarterback, then is he the quarterback the whole year? That's the kind of thing that sits right. there. But the athletic profile and the fact that he got paid, I don't understand how Waller isn't somebody that you're taking as a starting tight end. He's next not going to go away. I, I don't think he's going to. I think he'll be involved in the offense. It's just a matter of have we not even seen his ceiling, or was this his the right. most utilized he'll be? That's really the question, and that's going to be dictated by the personnel moves of the Raiders next year. If they go into next season with the roster very similar than it is right now, I'm going to see Darren Waller as you know a top six tight end someone that I will happily draft but I expect them to add either in the draft or in free agency remember they they had Antonio Brown they you know they they were connected to Odell Beckham 
rumors uh, before that. They they wanted someone in there, and I think they're going to. Uh, I think they're going to bring someone in. All right, uh, Mark Andrews comes in at number four. Consistency rank of number six. Andrews was funny because there were so many weeks in which he was banged up, missed practice, didn't play. He really didn't put up the same kind of numbers against top-end, tight-end defenses, almost 10 fewer points per week. 60% good games, 33% great. Had the most deep targets amongst tight ends this past year, which is 20. That's as many deep targets as Tyreek Hill. Andrews was somebody that put up double-digit touchdowns, one of the few players in the NFL that did that this year. Uh, 98 targets and a big play type of guy. When Lamar Jackson was escaping the pocket and looking downfield, Andrews is a big man. And you saw it again in the Pro Bowl. He just likes Mark Andrews, and he's a weapon. So he's solid year. Very, very solid year for Mark Andrews. He's just he's really difficult to gauge moving forward because the, the talent is undeniable of Mark Andrews and in the same with the connection with, with Lamar Jackson. But he was he not on the field because of the injuries and always being banged up because he averaged about 43% of the offensive snaps for the Ravens. And that's, I mean, that's not the type of – of play that I'm going to bet on a a big season coming through for a for a tight end. I just don't care because of the target totals. I don't care about the snap percentage with the way that this team runs. When Mark Andrews is on the field, he's just the go-to receiver. That's right. And what I'm saying is like I'd take him over Waller next year. And and that's fair because I I don't think I'm I'm not taking a hard stance against Mark Andrews, but this was exactly the the type of thing where I was like, dude, I'm I'm so out on Eric Ebron coming into this past year because it was it was he was never on the field. He had 13 touchdowns of the of the of tight ends who were in the top five for fantasy. Andrews is the only person who had more than six touchdowns, and it, yeah, it's great. He's great. He has the touchdowns, but we know the touchdowns fluctuate. Like next year, if Mark Andrews has the same stats, but with five, five touchdowns. touchdowns right. And it, it won't be that surprising of a thing. The big difference to me is the target share, though. Because er Eric Ebron did not have a high target share in that in that. He offense. did, actually. His target share. His target his, share in 2018 was he had more targets than Andrews had this year. No, I know he had more targets, but they threw the ball more. The target share, the percentage of targets that went his way, I would be shocked if they're the same. Because Mark I'll Andrews felt like a centerpiece of the Ravens offense outside of, you know, when he was injured. Well, and yeah, and we have the fact that it's, you know, the same offense going into next year, the same quarterback. Andrews is a valuable weapon, but Mike's right in the sense that, you know, five touchdowns next year would not surprise me at all. And then you look at a PPR format. Are you happy with 64 for eight fifty and five? No, not, not for where you're going to draft Mark Andrews not, next year. Not for what you're going to spend, right? Right. So yeah, that, Mark, that would Mark be Andrews the challenge. Had a higher part. target percentage. Do you have the the numbers? Fifteen and a half percent for Ebron, uh, twenty three percent for Andrews. Because yeah, they just that's don't a throw, huge number. Because they don't throw number. very much in Baltimore. Yeah, and so that I guess that's what I'm saying. That's where I see a big difference is that he was central. I mean, twenty three percent market share for a tight end is that's a very phenomenal large. number. I mean, that's George Kittle in and, Kelsey. And so I I believe he is too integral to the actual offense, uh, whereas Ebron was very touchdown dependent and wasn't as integral to the offense between the 20s. He probably won you five weeks. If you had Mark Andrews, weeks yeah, by one, himself. two, 10, 11, and 16, put up those kind of performances where that tight end differential was impactful for you. So, you know, you can look at it both ways. You can say maybe the touchdown number regresses, but are the Ravens going to be – last in the entire NFL in pass play percentage each and every year with this Lamar no. Jackson system? No, but the concern for the Ravens is if you you get a perfect storm of regression where if Mark Andrews' touchdowns come down also because Baltimore is not scoring at the same pace that they did this year, which they scored a lot. Like it, they won't score as many touchdowns. I, I, I would put the bet on. They won't score as many touchdowns next year as they did this year. It's just one of those – statistical yeah things the that Chiefs happened. just did they, it they overachieved on a, on a big scale so 
again, I'm not saying I'm betting against Mark Andrews, but there are certainly red flags. I want to see, like, where's his ADP? Is the game, well, I can take Travis Kelsey here in the third, or I can get Mark Andrews in the fourth. At that point, I would be completely out on on Mark Andrews, unless he's dropping to, like, the sixth round or so. Yeah, yeah I, I would mean, take Andrews in the sixth over that third rounder for Kelsey. Yeah, you'd be like mathematically dishonest to assume the same number of touchdowns for Baltimore right. next year. There should be a lower a lower number. Yeah, the, and it doesn't mean Baltimore doesn't win the Super Bowl. Cause right, the, right. Go look at the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, Chiefs, the Chiefs had their super year. Patrick got Mahomes knocked out. Went from what fifty touchdowns to thirties. Was it? Was it thirty? Um, and then you end up in a situation where yeah, they're not as prolific. The touchdown percentage goes down, but the team is still great. Holmes I think we all expect them 26. To, be, to be great. 26 passing touchdowns. Yeah. yeah. Zach Ertz is number five, number nine in consistency, and probably one of the players that we're going to have a hard time with going into 2020. I, I feel like I'm going to have an easy time with him. I don't want him. Wow. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want – for what Zach Ertz costs, because he was still a top five guy. He's been, you know, a top two guy for years. He, he'll probably, I would guess he's going to be the third tight end off the board. Maybe he's not. Maybe some of these other new guys come and take over that spot. But I think he's going to be the third guy. And the reality was he wasn't worth his draft capital at all until the decimation of the other receiving options. Now, if you got to the playoffs – you were super happy with Zach Ertz, right? He dominated from weeks 9 through 15. He became the Zach Ertz we know and love. You brought this up so much the previous year, Mike, the fact that his target volume was so dependent upon whether or not there were other options to throw the ball to, and we saw that through the first you know, eight weeks of the season. I drafted Zach Ertz. I, I lived the life of what the Eagles wanted to be before they had to throw to Zach Ertz so it much. Hurts. It hurts bad, man. He had six double-digit target games. Four of those were when Alshon Jeffrey was out. Exactly. His targets weren't there when Alshon was there, and you know they're going to replenish. They've Hugh Laurie's talked about like they need to get some better House? younger. Did you say? House? Oh, I did say Hugh Laurie. <laughs> Uh, I was making the house. The actor? Yeah. <laughs> the actor has been really weighing in here? Yeah, he is. He goes. Uh, when something hurts, you call house. Why? Did, Isn't that right? Why am I thinking? I don't know. How, man. Howie Jeffrey Roseman. Laurie? Is that how, who you're looking for? No. Howie. Oh. <laughs> wow. That's that's impressive. You, <laughs> Laurie. Where would that have come You've from? You've been watching the new space I show. I have been watching Avenue 5. Jeffrey Laurie is, uh, you know, he owns the team, doesn't he? Man. All right. Howie Roseman. The Eagles. That's general. that's the mistake you made. The, <laughs> you're the owner. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, uh -oh. he's he's come out and talked about uh, wanting to replenish, get some more youth in there, and and get. He he knows that wide receiver is a huge position of need. So, I mean, this is one of those things where, I mean, maybe maybe it'll happen again, and they'll have to throw to him. But you also had the tight the the, the touchdown problem once Dallas Goddard started siphoning off those touchdowns. I mean, you have part of the year where he was phenomenal for fantasy and part of the year where he sucked. It's just this is the, the episode, the series, the truth. What is the truth of Zach Ertz? Well, the truth of Zach Ertz is that he's going to be a start-worthy tight end again next year. Sure. That's the truth of Zach Ertz. The problem is, is whether the draft what's, capital yeah, what's catches up with him now or not. They threw the ball to the tight end position more than anybody but Baltimore. And maybe it's just all by necessity, like you said. Part of it's well, weapons, you have, you too. Have, you have two top-end exactly. tight ends. So, you know, does Mark Andrews end up getting drafted ahead of Zach Ertz? Because more Mark Andrews owners ended up winning championships. I think they're going to be pretty close. If you ask me right now, I would imagine Andrews goes a pick or two ahead of Ertz next year. I would think so. Austin Hooper. This is going to be interesting as well. My goodness, those first eight weeks for Austin Hooper. He finished number six. His consistency rank was number three. Will he be the forgotten man next year in fantasy drafts? He's got to have a team first. Yeah, I mean, you are talking about top ten finishes every single week of the season except for week two, all the way through week eight. I mean, before the bye. And then he, he got injured. He, he was dominant. He, he was, Do you believe? I, I – 
I do believe, and and not only that, but you know they they lost some other receiving options. Now, will he be uh, back in that role? I mean, we it's too early to know. But as far as looking at what he did this past year, and that's all we can say right now, he was uh, very important to the offense. He he made Matt Ryan better. He, he had a clear rapport, and the target volume was so great that he ended up with some monster games too. So there was. There was nothing not to love about Austin Hooper, and you drafted him late, so he was a home run going forward. Um, I, you know, I don't see why. You know, Austin Hooper wasn't an afterthought in the NFL draft. He was a highly touted guy. I remember, um, you know, a lot the of third round pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you know, I remember um, a lot of Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper talk, and you know, saying that Hooper, you know, would one day be great, and he was great. So. You know, I'm I'm in. I'm a believer. If this situation is similar next year, that what you saw the first eight weeks of the season is, you know, kind of necessity. Do you think that they'll pay him? Because they're going to need to pay him. He's 25 years old. I know the team wants to, and they say they want to, but that's going to be a pretty big number for a tight end. And like you said, they lost Sanu. He's a valuable weapon. We've seen Matt Ryan succeed uh, a lot more when he has a reputable tight end target. Historically speaking, do you think he'll be back in Atlanta? Because that would sure, sure make predicting I, his output nice, nicer. I lean the side that he will, yeah, but but not by a ton. I would say uh, maybe sixty forty. True catch rate is when they adjust for like errant passes, right? His true catch rate this past year ninety seven point four percent. He's Matt yeah, Ryan's that's going. Almost, that's almost as good as Kelsey in the red zone, man. <laughs> that's. That's a solid number. Matt Ryan's going to be loaning his printer for that contract. I mean, he is going to be knocking down the door to bring back Austin Hooper. If if you can throw the ball to him, and if you put it in his vicinity, he catches it no matter what. And and I feel like because of the fact that he got injured in the second half of the year, he wasn't you know that great once he got back from the injury. It, it wasn't what you saw the first eight weeks of the season. You know, I I don't think he's going to be drafted where he should be. Uh, you know, if he's back in that role, well, let's just put it as we've talked about six tight ends. He's at the bottom of the six, right? As far as as where, where he'll be drafted, despite being the third most consistent tight end uh, last year, none of the guys we've talked about so far are going to go behind Austin Hooper in the draft. Kelsey, Kittle, Waller, Andrews, Ertz. You'll all go ahead of Hooper. You're probably right, and if that is true, then Hooper will be my number one target in the draft because the value will be great. Right. I, I'll probably have him as the third tight end. Um, in just projections. Can I give you another target? Jared Kuyuk. <laughs> yeah, Jared Kuyuk, uh was <laughs> that was the longest one. Yeah, we've it wasn't had. my. It's been a while, Mike. I feel like you gotta. It's, it's got to be quick and the sharp. The magic of Jared Kuyuk is. It's, it's got to be like a whip. Yes, Kuyuk. It's just a little Kuyuk. <laughs> Did you guys see the Sam Elliott commercial? Yeah, of course. The mustache dance. There should be a law passed where Sam Elliott can only play Sam Elliott in movies. I think that there law are exists. I think he, he's pretty typecast. No, be like his point. name. His name has to remain oh. Sam. Oh. He cannot play a character. He cannot name his character. That's against the law. Yeah, you could call him Mister E. Yeah, or, you know because you know it's still. Yeah, that's fair. Ooh, you know. But his mustache does I the you were uh, doing a mystery pun. There. Mustache does the worm. And then he does all that dancing. There Just, needed we needed more mustache dance in that commercial. I enjoyed the commercial very much. So the thing with Jerry, are we moving on to Jared Kuyuk? Yeah, Jared Kuyuk. I guess. Okay, so the the thing with Jared Kuyuk, he's he was uh, much better than I uh, thought he was going to be this year. Uh, Consistency rank number five. Yeah, very consistent, very good. When I look at the totality of all the tight ends and the consistency front to back of uh, how how they performed. There's two kind of numbers that really stand out to me. Take the top two guys out. They were, you know, Kelsey and, uh, and, and Kittle were great. Every other really actually relevant tight end, was their bust rate was almost identical. 25, 33, 33, 23, 29 percent. Like, you know, basically about a third of their games they bust. But the percentage of great games that these tight ends perform at, they weren't the same. So, like, Jared Cook was down at 21 uh, Zach Ertz was down at 19, um, and um, let's see, uh, Darren Waller was down at 19% of their games as great games. So they didn't have as many games that were great in Jared Cook's, uh <laughs> position. It was because they didn't necessarily need him to. He could he could do it. 
he was phenomenal. But when you got Michael Thomas and you got all these other options, he he wasn't as often necessary to have a big game. And so the other players that are mixed in, uh, Mark Andrews, Austin Hooper, and a guy we're yet to talk about, who had a percentage of monster games way higher up in the 30s, I think I want the guys who have – I'm not worried about how often they bust. I'm worried about how often they can have a great game. That's kind of one of my takeaways from this series for next year. Yeah, Cook is hard, though, Jay, for me. because if Who? You, Cook. Thank you. Uh, because the first – Well, he was Jared Cook for the first four games. That's what I was going to say is, is you have a, a new player on a new team for four weeks. If you break down the percentage of times he put up great games beyond week five – that number goes up quite goes a bit. It goes to 30%, and that would, that would be much better. That's in line with the other players. So if you Are think you this is – that would be higher than the 21? <laughs> I'm saying that would be – I'm saying 30% would be basically in the tier of the Hoopers, Mark Andrews, and – I would say if you don't have Kittle or Kelsey, you're probably happier with Jared Cook from weeks five on than anybody else in, in all of football. You could have got, because he got was, Cook off the waiver wire, too. I mean, his worst game in that entire span was 14th at the position. Every other week, he was inside the top 12. I just mean from a happiness factor, if Drew Brees is back and Jared Cook is back, I don't know. I go Cook in again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, look, if the first month of the season was a new team getting involved, getting used to it, and that is, that's the reason – then I think you're right that Jared Cook would, you know, should be uh, phenomenal next year. I think that that's an easy reason to say, but it, it could also just been they had other great options because they have other great options. Who? My, Michael Th the offense. I know they have Michael Thomas, but who do they have beyond yeah, Michael Cook, Thomas? Cook is the second that's it. option. You know, uh, Alvin Kamara. I would put him in there as well. I'm just saying. As I'm far shocked as by Cook's consistency. His consistency was outlandishly good. From weeks five on. So whether it was newness or not, they figured it out in week five, and it lasted through the rest of the year, which was nice to see because Jared Cook has been in a position to be projected to do well many, many times in the yes. past and never done this before. Well, and this maybe was, that's a reason to avoid it. This was him. the reverse Cook because he was bad week one. Oh, that's interesting. Cook, Cook Jared is, Cook is legendary for being awesome week one, making fantasy players spend 20% of their fab. And then he copperfields. Yeah. And he just – well, he's we, gone. We now call it the Hawkinson. So, um, here's something I, I was curious. We have three different really important tight ends this year that had uh, real, real bad stretches. You had Jared Cook with the first month of the season where he was terrible. You had Austin Hooper post injury where he wasn't the same as after those first eight weeks. And you have, we're going to talk about him soon, Tyler Higby, who was un fathomably good the last five weeks but the beginning of the season wasn't a starter I went into our metrics and I just deleted out all of those bad stretches if we say there's legitimate reason if okay so if you know a Hooper was dealing with the injury if Cook was getting used to the new team and Higby obviously was not the starter yet based on all of those metrics Austin Hooper would have been the number one most consistent Tyler Higby would have been the number five most consistent and to, to your point here Andy, Jared Cook, Cook, would have been the number two most consistent tight end, even ahead of Kelsey and Kittle. Yeah, because he was awesome. All right, we need to talk about a few more names that might have some big-time relevance next year and, and need some truth revealed. Tyler Higby. Tyler Higby is – weeks 13 on <laughs> was a yeah, revelation. Tyler Higby is what? Uh, he was the consistency rank of number 10 in the full season – from weeks 11 through 17, he was number three. In that span, he was absolutely dominant. But how do you really bank on five weeks of a Sean McVay offense to define where you're drafting Tyler Higby? He's the kind of player that you could draft him. Like, he will go late. Yes. He will 100% go late. So you either go late and you catch lightning in a bottle or you go late and you overcommit to a player that isn't actually part of the offense. Or he goes late and he is a revelation for you. Well, the nice thing is that when that change happened, the last five weeks, there was it. It was not simply just, hey, let's throw it to this guy a little bit more and see how he does. You had a snap percentage the whole season that was in the 50s, 60s, and then the last five weeks, his snap percentages were 91, 97, 85, 89, and 96% of offensive snaps. 
they said he is now yep. the starter. He is now a centerpiece of this offense. So I think we're going to have to wait and see going into next year. It, are, is he featured like that? It, I mean, I don't know if we're going to have the insight before the season to know for sure. If we do, I'm all in. But I think it's worth the gamble. I think it's worth gambling. Like If he's – like I was sitting over here. You guys, oh, he's going to go late. If he is going late, then I'm 100% all in. He'll be the guy I target at, at the end of drafts because it, it was only five games, but like Jason's saying, it was a very, very clear decision that they said this works and this is what we're going to move forward with because before when he was – he turned into a 90-plus percent of the snaps – type of a player he was you know chilling in the 50s or so I mean he just he wasn't a part of the offense the tight end as a whole was was never a huge part of the offense because it was the three wide receivers in uh in in Woods uh Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks and Brandon Cooks absolutely disappeared and they've just replaced him with a tight end so if Higby is going late uh then I, I'll be all in on drafting him because if it doesn't work out then I'll just figure something else out Couple tight ends we can't forget about Evan Ingram. Mm -hmm. Evan Ingram, when he played, put up a twenty-five percent great game number. That is difference making. Weeks one, three, eight, big time weeks from Evan Ingram. Obviously injured, didn't play a lot. Daniel Jones, Eli Manning did the dance, but we can't forget about Evan Ingram. I imagine he will be another. Late, be late round tight end type I, of situation. I think he'll. I think he'll be drafted pretty high. I think I, people, yeah. ba based on his history of being good for fantasy and his uh, original draft capital, I think people will be inside in. the top eight. Yeah, I think he'll be inside the top eight drafted yep. tight ends. Interesting. And I probably will be out, not based on talent, but just based on injury history. He's at this point, you got to worry whether the guy can stay on the field. Well, then you don't want me to bring up this guy because. Uh, oh no. <laughs> Will Disley, oh, man. He didn't get to play much, but 50% uh, of the time he put up a great game. His consistency rank was actually number four. He only played weeks one through six. It was special, but... He burned bright. Yeah. This was also during a period of time in which we didn't see a lot from DK Metcalf yet. And it will be hard for... It will be hard for anybody to kind of be in on a returning from devastating injury, Will Disley. I bet against him returning from the torn patella. I will bet against him returning from a torn Achilles. I'm sorry, big Montana. Yeah. I want you to succeed, but I – oh, man. It's just really unfortunate. I mean, if you take out the injury game where he basically didn't play that week six, he would be the most consistent tight end. He was – unbelievably great and we we talked about it on the quarterback episode Russell Wilson and his touchdown volume was really hurt when he lost Disley I mean D Disley is a great red zone guy for Russell Wilson and if he can get back out on the field I mean it, you know at least give some kind of hope and excitement for the future of tight ends that there'll be enough to field 12 like that's just uh, we just need 12 right just the 12 good ones the truth about the tight end position is that it's a difficult position to you know, figure out beyond the top few guys in terms of where you want to commit yourself. Because if you commit yourself to Evan Ingram at the great value, are you getting the injury bug? Are you getting the inconsistency? You know, betting on a Will Disley, yeah, you got four good games from him. But maybe he's back on the field. But is he the same Will Disley after an injury? Because a lot of players aren't after that type of injury. It's just hard. Yeah, I mean, and Hunter is, Henry might have a new team. Austin Hooper might have a new team. This is why I don't blame people when they take a tight end early. The way that you take a quarterback early, and it's just not a strategy but that I think one of works those guys was Ertz. Because, well, sh sure, but I'm I'm saying take the shot on a known commodity. You could be wrong, but the point with the difference between tight end and quarterback is that there are so there's just an endless option at quarterback. Just grab someone off of waivers. They're all pretty good. There's five or six late-round quarterbacks that are phenomenal. There's just not with tight ends. If you want a really, you know, you want a Kittle, you want a Kelsey, that, like, that's the end of the tier. That's, that's it. You have to pay up for one, and then you can't just always find one. I mean, the last couple of years, it's, 
it's worked out. You know, Darren Waller was a great success for well, us. George Kittle was, in fact, one of those guys. Sure. I mean, there's usually one, one or two, but you're right. It's not the, the same amount as quarterbacks. All right, anything else you guys want to throw in? I think we're done. I, I just wanted to at least briefly talk about Dallas Goddard. What do you guys make of of his season over the second half? I mean, he really started to turn it on there with, what have we got, seven games as a top 12 Fool's tight gold. end? Fool's go. Really? Big time. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, Zach, Zach. I love Dallas here, Here's Goddard. why. Two, two reasons. You First, huge compelling arguments that have been repeated on this show multiple times about the percentage of the ball going to the tight end position. If if those apply to Zacherts, they apply even more to Dallas Goddard. Two, I watched him play football. Super athletic, talented guy has a case of the drops from time to time. Has a problem holding on to the football, which and he's never going to be a better option than Zacherts in the on the offense. Ertz is a much better player. So then you're banking on all of those arguments not coming true, and he really didn't put up difference making weeks very often, I, even I, when he had the opportunity. I agree. It's it's hard to roll with the second tight end on a team he, he at the end of the year he might be okay he might be you know a top 12 tight end like he was, like this, he year. was he this year he was number 10 but it wasn't good you <laughs> you didn't enjoy the ride I mean he had seven percent of his games were great games 40 percent of his games were busts if you rolled with the number like that's one of the misleading things oh he's a tight end one he's a top 10 tight end it doesn't matter there's like five good tight ends if you didn't have one of them, it doesn't matter if you had tight end seven or eight. I remember uh, last year, I think Trey Burton, gigantic bust, terrible trade. He was like the tight end seven or something. It was like you, it could sound good, but the truth is it's not good. So tight end 10, not good enough to win in fantasy football. I will say this, Mike, to Goddard's credit, he is the kind of player that could have 44 receptions and 13 touchdowns in right. an outlier type of year. I mean, he's that big and strong and that that uh kind of red zone weapon but i'm just i think i was personally disappointed with the opportunity that he had over the back half he's also only a second year at the tight end position he's going into year three i mean zach Ertz wasn't he wasn't really zach Ertz until at least a few years into his career and they're philly's going to run two tight end sets they've already they've said this is what we're going to continue to do he was a second round pick when they didn't seem to need a tight end i don't know i just i, I don't think know it's, if i'm gonna go there all right it's I, I i think it's possible for I, goddard i think it is possible and i love the talent i've always been a goddard apologist uh, drafted him super high in our startup uh, dynasty this last year because i believe in the talent a couple just, years a couple years from now yeah I, I agree i think he's gonna have a good career but i, I think it'll take a couple more years Fair. Well, unless it doesn't and then and then i'm wrong <laughs> that is it for the show <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Appreciate the subscriptions, the reviews. We'll be back with another show Thursday. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget, with Simply Safe Home Security, you get comprehensive protection from your home with real video evidence to give police eyewitness account. Get them out there 350% faster than a normal burglar alarm, and it's all monitored 24-7. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers.